Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, I wanted to just pop on here and just give a quick update on how I'm doing and kind of talk about the grieving process that I've been feeling. Um, you know, grief is a very, very personal thing. And I think that everybody experiences it differently. Um, I know for myself, and probably for a lot of people, my brain wants to process and move through it as fast as possible, which is kind of not the way that grief works, which is something that I have always struggled with, to be perfectly honest. And ooh wee, my hair is a hot mess. <laughs> <laughs> whatever this is real life um so yeah I just want to kind of like process process barrel through and then I'm fine um but that's not really how it works so um for the most part honestly I've been feeling okay I definitely feel a bit detached um you know my first experience felt a lot more emotionally traumatic. And I think honestly that this time around, it, it's really just because I'm kind of like numb maybe to the whole situation. Um, and I know I talked about this in my last video that it's certainly out of self-preservation. I... The actual process of the miscarriage itself really wasn't too bad. Um, and I think that a lot of that had to do with that I kind of knew going into it um, what to expect. Um, which I'm done bleeding, like everything has passed. And now I'm just left with the feelings i guess so like while it's actually happening like i guess i guess the loss is more tangible i mean because it's literally tangible but now that it's done you know it still feels very um visceral i guess um and kind of finding my way through moving through these emotions is I guess my next task at hand. Uh, I'm very, very lucky that I already have a really, really great therapist um, that I saw last week who has always been a great support for me. I know I touched on this in another video, but like reaching out for help <laughs> And asking for help is really difficult for me. You know, I think that I'm a very typical nurse and I'm great at taking care of other people, but I'm total shit at taking care of myself, which is something that I'm working on. I'm always working on and sometimes, you know, are better than others. Um, I definitely, you know, throughout my adult life have off and on struggled with uh, bouts of depression. Um, and... My brain, my brain, it just, something that I really struggle with is, you know, I can acknowledge and I know like intellectually that I'm a good person and, you know, I do good work and I'm a good friend and all of those things but there is just like this pervasive like voice in my brain that tells me that I'm not good enough and that no one likes me and that I'm, gar I'm a garbage person kind of um, and it's been that way for a long time to be honest which you know a million people can tell me that you know I'm wonderful and I mostly know that intellectually I know that but I don't necessarily feel that if that makes sense and 
a lot of the ways that that voice manifests for me is through my dreams. I've always been a very, very active, vivid dreamer. I always remember my dreams, um, which can be fun, but it can also be kind of <sighs> exhausting, especially when your dreams are not pleasant. And something that I've been struggling with over the last few days has been just dream after dream about <laughs> like, you know, I'm in a situation and everyone around me is telling me how awful I am and how nobody likes me. And it's just like, you know, in the moment, in the dreams, I'm so mad. I'm like, that's not true. I'm good enough. <laughs> but it's just, it's exhausting. And I wish that, I honestly, like, I don't, I don't know how to break through that. I don't know how to kind of, like, silence that subconscious negative self-thought. Um... You know, it's something that I'm working on. I, I honestly am not entirely sure, like, where to go. Like, I can talk about this for days and days, but, like, to the core, like, how do you stop that from happening when I guess I feel like it's so deeply in your subconscious that, like, it manifests in your dreams? So that has mostly been what I'm struggling with right now um, so yeah it's definitely affecting like my sleep and I feel like my general mood is okay I'm really just trying to kind of like get back into my routine so I started going back to the gym yesterday um, which felt, it felt really good to be able to do that, um, and just move forward. And I know that this will pass and that's generally kind of what happens when I kind of get into a cycle like this is that I know that it will pass. Um, usually when I'm grieving something or have like kind of emotional turbulence, I really feel the need to express myself creatively. Sometimes that is through painting. Um, I really feel a big writing purge coming. So um, that might be something that I explore, um, kind of a way of dealing with grief. Something that someone um, suggested to me that I thought was just so beautiful was to, um, while I was having the miscarriage, to, you know, collect some of what was coming out and bury it, which I thought, you know, it was such a beautiful sentiment. Um, and I really wanted to do it. My only hesitance was that, I don't know if this is going to make sense, but like, I don't feel an emotional connection necessarily to where we're living right now. You know, we're living in an apartment. Um, I don't really know how long we'll be here, as in here physically in this apartment, here in Florida. And I don't know, I just couldn't bear the thought of doing this really, really special thing and then potentially moving away um so i opted not to do that but what i i have done is um a dear friend of mine and my parents sent me flowers so i clipped a few of those flowers and i'm going to dry them and keep those so um i feel like that is a nice way to honor the baby we lost um, that way I can always have those flowers with me wherever I go. So, oh, yeah, it's a little bit heavy, I apologize, um, which 
I don't know why I need to apologize for that. Whatever. Um, so plans moving forward. I phoned and spoke with our reproductive endocrinologist. And the plan is to um, next month when my cycle starts to give them a call, we'll start all of the testing um, that I need to do before the IVF cycle. And I think they're also going to look into uh, doing some testing for recurrent pregnancy loss since this was my second miscarriage, um, which I definitely want to do. Part of me is absolutely terrified, you know, obviously that what if they find something major wrong that's going to make it even more difficult, you know, to get pregnant and actually have a successful pregnancy. Um, all along, you know, we've always just kind of assumed that the problem was just that I have PCOS and that's our problem. But there is a part of me that worries. I think that maybe there's something more going on. But ultimately, you know, knowledge is power. So I think that finding out if there is anything else going on is Ultimately, it's only going to help the situation. So um, that's kind of the game plan for now. And I will definitely keep you guys updated uh, as things move along and progress. Um, I want to thank everyone that has reached out to me and offered us their support. It means the world to me especially with us being kind of like on our own down here in Florida we don't really know anyone <laughs> so um it has really meant a lot all of your support so um I want to thank all of the new subscribers I've gotten out of this whole situation that feels really special as well um so just thank you guys and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.